Next on Broadway Profiles, like swallowing a jagged little pill, Celia Rose Gooding talks about how the hit musical has helped her stay centered during the Broadway shutdown. Plus, you can't keep a good witch down. How one of the stars of Wicked is working to stay connected to kids in her home city of Nashville. And performances from Lin-Manuel Miranda, Laura Benanti, and more. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com. Welcome to Broadway Profiles. I'm your host, Tamsin Fidel. Well, right now, we really should be celebrating the Tony Awards. Instead, we're keeping our fingers crossed, hoping for an end to the COVID-19 pandemic and also an end to the shutdown. But we are finally starting to get a more clear picture of what Broadway looks like going forward. Best case scenario, Broadway won't reopen till Labor Day. We know some shows will not come back at all. Frozen, Beetlejuice, they've officially closed. Others, like MJ, the Michael Jackson musical, have pushed back their openings till 2021. As for the Tonys, that ceremony is pushed back till who knows when, but there are great tributes to Broadway's biggest night, like Broadway.com Show of Shows, a celebration of the Tonys that you can see on the Broadway.com website or YouTube channel starting June 7th. But really, here's the bottom line. By far, this is the longest our theaters have ever been closed, three months and counting. Which is why, once again, our show is recorded entirely from our homes, from my home, from the homes of Broadway stars, musicians, and composers. And we've got some great interviews and performances for you, so sit back and enjoy. We're kicking things off with Celia Rose Gooding. She's a second generation Broadway star. She's the daughter of a Tony winner, and she's also the current star of Jagged Little Pill. Now she's taking the lessons she's learned from the musical and applying them to life in this new norm. Let's talk about where you were when this all when this all happened, because you really were in the prime of a huge, huge show on Broadway that we can't wait to see reopen. Talk a little bit about it and, and, uh, and how you were after you got the news. I was actually, sitting on my staircase just watching the news and realizing that like today is gonna be a life-changing day i realized that jagged little pill actually has really prepared me for this kind of moment um it's taught me a lot about how to handle traumatic situations and situations that are completely wildly out of my control and i think the moment it, it clicked, the moment where I was like, oh, jagged little pill, this is the jagged little pill that I'm swallowing right now. So I have to, I, I have to, for the sake of the story that I tell, take a step back and say, what can I do? I'm living and I'm learning. I'm loving and I'm learning. I'm crying and I'm learning. But I think, thank goodness for the show that I have and the lessons that I've learned so far and understanding the fact that I'm coming back. I am. Your mom and you went through so much before this. You still just had this spirit, a spirit of, um, of coming through and getting on the other side that people you know, respect and look up to and, 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 and feel. Thank you. My mother, I speak, I, I, I don't know how she does what she does. Um, and I think the best option for me is to just look at her and see her and learn from her all that she is able to do, especially in the idea of resilience. She, my mother lost her husband with a kid in a crib and a baby in her, like she was pregnant when we lost my dad. And that would have been a perfect opportunity for my mother to give up and no one would have chastised her for it. No one would have, no one would have blamed her and said, oh, you can't do this. But the fact that she's able to get up every day and raise two kids i can't give up because she because she did it so who am i to say that i'm not capable of something and i'm not capable of resilience and perseverance when my mother thinks i am so if she says that i'm able to keep going and push forward then i absolutely am about how the Broadway community is doing. I know I've seen you a couple of times in different videos and, and everyone coming together and collaborating. And you know, you're part of that because I've, I've seen several different, you know, clips of performances and cast come together. Did you have any in particular that you enjoy doing? Because there were a few collaborations you've done, right? Um, I liked the, um, the, the You Learn video that Jagged Little Pill did for Earth Day. 
swallow it down. What a jagged little pill. It feels so good. Swimming in your stomach. The last time something like this has happened was 9-11, and right after that, we had the video of all of those incredible Broadway stars singing and coming together as a community, and I think theater has always been a place for people to go where they feel like they have nothing, or to go when they feel like they need to be uplifted, or going when the times get scary and they need someone to lean on and they need, it and they need to be uplifted, and I think the fact that as a community, we've been able to do that with our technology is super important. If I wasn't gonna be doing the show eight times a week, I'm very glad I'm doing this. Wicked is one of Broadway's longest running musicals and no doubt about it, one of our shows guaranteed to reopen as soon as Broadway does. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason. The current stars of Wicked lent their voices to a music video thanking our first responders and our frontline workers. Gina Claire Mason plays Glinda in Wicked. It's her dream role, and I know she can't wait to come back. But she's still doing amazing work right now with kids, even though she can't be on stage. Check it out. Good to see you. Where are you actually? I'm in South Orange, New Jersey. Oh, very nice. How is it there? You know, as it's warming up, we're seeing people playing out in the yards and wandering over to the parks and, and that's been sweet. But um, I did have to come into Manhattan a couple weeks ago to get some things from the theater. They opened it for a window of time and spaced us all out into different uh, time frames to go in and get things. Because obviously when we left, we didn't know that we'd be gone for so long. It was very surreal because I'm kind of in the suburbs out here, so I don't think I'm feeling it the way people are in the epicenter. And going into this into the city and seeing for myself, you know, all the storefronts closed down and then going into the theater and seeing that all dark, it was it was very surreal. All right, so well, so help, let's talk a little bit about it. How are you spending your uh, quarantine time? Um, so I've been teaching a number of master classes and something I've been talking about with kids is um, rest, the things that we can be doing. What, what is restful, what is creatively inspiring, and what is fun. You know, there's one school I'm working with in particular, Franklin Brentwood Arts Academy. They're based out of Nashville, and I was their first student in the fifth grade. So wow. it feels really sweet to work with them and know that these kids are growing up in the same area that I grew up, to feel like I'm able to give back in that way, especially during this time and encourage them through this season of slowness. Um, it feels like, yeah, a really beautiful beautiful community, even if it's just virtually. You uh, put together a song with the cast of Wicked. Yes. Uh, say thank you to the the heroes of, of all of this, who uh, I think we, we certainly look at the healthcare workers and nurses and doctors and just everybody essential, so different these days. I remember sitting in um, in the guest room next door and, and feeling like, what is this gonna be like? I had the audio track playing in my ear. And so I recorded mine first. They sent my take to Lindsay, who's on the West Coast right now. And she put the audio in her ear with the track and with me and sang along to that. So we could kind of create that, uh, you know, unison. <laughs> and then, I mean, seeing the way that they edited it together, I was totally floored and I still can't watch it without Ooh, getting a little verklempt. My inbox on Instagram has been flooded with, with DMs from healthcare workers and from families of healthcare workers and from people who have just been affected by the virus, which is obviously everyone's been affected in, in some way, but just seeing the impact that it's had has been, I mean, even more moving for me. So I'm really, really grateful that I got to be part of it. Last month, Broadway celebrated the 90th birthday of legendary composer and lyricist Stephen Sondheim. It was a huge musical party in spite of the corona pandemic. Take Me to the World, a Sondheim 90th birthday celebration, features some of the biggest stars on the planet performing Sondheim's best love songs. You can still see it on Broadway.com and the Broadway.com YouTube channel, but we're gonna give you the highlights of some of those great performances during this show. Right now, this is Lin-Manuel Miranda singing Giants in the Sky. When you're way up high and you look below with the world you left and the things you know little more than a glance is enough to show you just how small you are. 
when you wake up high and you're on your own in a world like none that you've ever known where the sky is lead and the earth is stone you're free to do whatever pleases you exploring things you never dare cause you don't care when suddenly there's a big tall terrible giant at the door again you can watch the whole show on broadway.com and also their youtube channel but we've still got a lot more to talk about on this edition of broadway profiles up next, I'm going to talk with New Kenji about music, parenting during a pandemic, and the upcoming Broadway revival, Caroline or Change. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles. With no Tony Award ceremony this year, Broadway.com's paying tribute to Broadway's biggest night. Editor in Chief Paul Wintour here to talk about the show of shows and the season overall. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tamsin. Good to see you. So l let's talk about what's going on because this is a this is a year unlike any other we've seen. That's for sure. We created a our own Tony special. It's called Show of Shows. Broadway.com salutes the Tonys, and we're really looking at the people have a real emotional connection to the Tony Awards fans, and they look forward to the first Sunday in June every year because they can sort of have this watch this amazing television show with all their favorite people and feel like they're part of this you know, this community that we're a part of. And so we wanted to honor that enthusiasm and that excitement. And really, we're really taking a look back at this amazing history. We're catching up with a lot of many, over a hundred past Tony Award winners. We're doing a lot of amazing reunion performances from some iconic Broadway cast, bringing them back together to recreate their Tony performances. And we're just having a lot of fun and, and really sort of giving people hopefully a little bit of that theater magic on that night. We know we can't replicate the Tony Awards, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun for Broadway fans everywhere. You're right, though. It really is an emotional connection. There's no question about it. Uh, there's so much going on to celebrate, though. When we wait for Broadway to come back, then we know it will. It's a matter of time, and uh, always thank you for what you're doing for keeping the spirit alive. Broadway.com Show of Shows, a tribute to the Tonys, airs live Sunday, June 7th at 7 p.m. You can also watch it anytime after on Broadway.com or their YouTube channel. The revival of Carolina Change was supposed to play its first preview March 13th. Broadway shut down the day before. But the good news is that show is now committed to come back at Studio 54. The musical will also mark the Broadway return of New Kenji. She plays the moon. When we got the news, um, it was it was heartbreaking to say the least because we were one day before our very first public performance, our first preview, and um, you know we have kids in the show too, so there were a lot of emotions going on. You know, I was being emotional as an artist, but then also sort of having like mommy instincts and wanting to <laughs> wanting to you know ease the pain of of, you know some of the creative team and the kids and and we all knew that we had to do this though. Well so how have you been doing through all this? Uh, you know I've been doing great. I've been um it's been hard in one sense because you know I am a a natural born performer like I love to be on a stage and so not being able to do what I love to do, what is my job, my passion, um, has been very um, disturbing in some <laughs> cases. Of, like, I need to be on stage. But in other cases, um, through technology, I found a way of being able to share my, my music and my love to others. I have a five-year-old daughter that is doing online schooling and oh, more power to these teachers because even with online, so she's five years old, you can't just put a five-year-old in front of the computer and expect that they're going to be focused, <laughs> you know? No, so no. everything, yeah, so you have to supervise. You have to be sitting next to your child while they're going through these classes and making sure they're paying attention. It's a full-time job in addition to just kind of rolling out 
master classes that I'm doing and I'm going to start doing some story time with lots of moms and dads that are out there just looking for new activities to have for their kids. You've been performing. I've seen a few of them. We've been performing obviously on Zoom. Uh, any favorites yes. that you've had so far? One of the first roles that I got a chance to originate was Mary Wells in Motown. So that was just all belt, 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 just like sing for the guides you know, throw the head back and just open up those lungs. <laughs> I love it. I love to do, you know, I love to do my guy, you know, which is like, nothing you can say could tear me away from my guy. But then in Carolina Change, I get to do the moon and, you know, it has a lot of legit materials. So then I go into like, moon change, moon change glowing bright you know it's it's just it's it's glorious you know tony winner laura benanti is one of broadway's biggest and best loved stars and she has done so much to help inspire and support during this nationwide shutdown this is laura singing the stephen sondheim song i remember i remember days or at least i try but as years go by, there is sort of haze, and the bluest ink isn't really sky. And again, you can still watch Take Me to the World on Broadway.com and also their YouTube channel. But there's still a whole lot more to come on this edition of Broadway Profiles. I'll talk to Pulitzer Prize winning composer Tom Kitt about the three shows he has on hold right now. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles. Prize winning composer Tom Kitt has three shows on hold right now because of the COVID-19 crisis. We had a chance to chat about how he's coping with the shutdown. We have three productions on hold right now. Uh, talk a, just a little bit if you can just list them off for people because they're big ones and in fact I've, I've walked by a couple of different signs of uh, flying over sunset and I just felt oh, I can't wait until. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, so there's Jagged Little Pill, which has uh, been running since uh, early November. There's Flying Over Sunset, which was slated to start uh, previews on March 12th and open April 16th. Lincoln Center has already put out a press release that they are uh, rescheduling the Flying Over Sunset in the fall. That, that was a huge relief. And then there's The Visitor at the Public Theater. The conversations have been wonderful. They are very passionate about The Visitor and um, they have a number of, of productions on hold. So um, I, I know that they are going to bring this to the world. It's just a question of, of, of when. So let your fingers bleed, you know. That's just what you need. You feed your soul. You save your soul. And then Jagged, uh, Jagged Little Pill, um, you know, I think is in the same holding pattern that all the Broadway shows are, are in. And so hopefully, uh, like all shows, we'll, we'll be able to weather this and, and, and come back. And I think that the um, anthemic nature of Alanis Morissette's voice, that there's going to be people who are going to want to um, experience that and, and feel the catharsis of Alanis Morissette. So I feel confident that Jagged Little Pill will also come right back. Do you remember where you were with every one of those songs growing up and what, what moments those hit you and when you, when you needed them? Uh, art, art is, is, is such a part of our daily life and it speaks to a time and a place. And I already know um, there's, there's a beautiful song that my, my uh, daughter has been playing on the piano. Uh, I think it's called Thousand Years. Um, and uh, she plays it every day. And I just know that I'm always going to think of that beautiful song um, when I have all the, the, the mix of, of, of feelings about, um, about what, we're, what we're going through. So, so uh, what is Jagged Little Pill? Jagged Little Pill meant something in 1995, uh, listening to that in college, and now Jagged Little Pill being immersed in that, uh, in, in, in that score uh, at this very moment in time, it's gonna mean a whole different uh, set of things to me. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles. Tony winner Katrina Link will lead the new revival of Company as Bobby when Broadway returns. But you can still check out her amazing performances online. For the Sondheim birthday celebration, she performed Joanna from Sweeney Todd. 
Do they think that walls can hide you? Even now I'm at your window. I am in the dark beside you. Buried sweetly in your yellow hair. I feel you, Joanna, and one day I'll see. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, stay safe and stay healthy. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles.